Hello, I'm V.B. Price. I'm the editor of NewMexicoMercury.com. I'm here today in the Mercury Library with retired, former, longtime CNN math teacher, former anti-Vietnam War protester, and good friend of many New Mexicans who struggle with various forms of environmental injustice and other kinds of hardship, Mark Rudd. Recently, the national and local GOP attacked Mark for his endorsement of New Mexico gubernatorial candidate Alan Weber, and I suppose vice versa, signaling once again, in my mind anyway, that the culture war is still alive and messing with everyone's mind even now. Mark Rudd, along with his wife Marla Painter, uh, are good friends of the Mercury and staunch advocates of ecological health and justice in New Mexico. It's excellent to have you here with us today, Mark. Thanks for having me. Barrett, I appreciate it. And uh, I'm glad you added the vice versa in the introduction because um, really it wasn't an attack on me. It's an attack on Alan Weber. Right. Um, he, they, the Republicans uh, probably see him as a threat. Yeah. You know, he, um, he's a smart guy and he knows how to raise money and uh, he knows business. Yep. You know, he's, in a sense, he's an unlikely ally for me because <laughs> I, I tend to be anti-corporate. And he, he made his money uh, 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 from a, uh, a, a, a magazine, Fast Company, which yeah. is about innovative capitalism. Right. So, you know, so <laughs> unlikely bedfellows. But, uh, but, but um, uh, he's a progressive. Yeah. And a, 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 a very open social progressive. So they're, they're using, uh, it's really a recycled tactic yeah. when you think about it. It's, it's, it's the same thing um, that was unsuccessful that the uh, Republicans used against uh, President Obama right. via uh, uh, Sarah Palin. Right, exactly. Same deal. So um, it probably will backfire. It probably already has backfired because I understand that uh, progressive support for um, uh, Alan Weber is, is pretty strong. And maybe uh, it, it'll, it'll take him over the top in the primary. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. I think this may have really given a huge boost to Alan Weber. Um, uh, the Mercury has had the opportunity to interview all the candidates. And uh, uh, we've... It's been wonderful to hear everybody talk for you know almost an hour, you know about the issues. And I know, I think most Democrats are torn in a lot of ways uh, about this, about this primary because they're all good candidates in one way or another. C could you talk about that a little bit too? Well, it's a pretty good field. Yeah, that's the thing. And and um, um, uh, in terms of the the quality of the people involved, but. Uh, uh, um, you know, I, I, I could talk, mention each of them. In fact, I was a supporter of Howie Morales uh, because uh, I don't know him personally, but um, people who uh, I, uh, I really respect, like uh, Jerry Ortiz Pino and D.D. Feldman and friends from Silver City, they all support Howie right. Morales, and, right. and, and, and probably they have good reasons. And uh, Lawrence Rael has accomplished a lot. Um, uh, Linda uh, uh, Lopez uh, works pretty darn hard for the South Valley. Uh, Gary, I, I, I have friends who work for Gary King and yeah. think the world of him. Yeah. Uh, the question co came down to for me is how do we beat, how do we get rid of Susana Martinez? Right. You know, you know, send her back to um, um, Las Cruces or Texas or wherever, you know. So, um what convinced me, just in a nutshell, yeah. about um, uh, Alan Weber uh, is um, when I heard him say that he was going to make this campaign, this election, a referendum on the Koch brothers, yes. on their policies and their influence uh, with Susana Martinez. Right. They're the, the source of her millions. Right. So I, I thought, well, that's interesting. You know, because that's really what it comes down to is the far right wing politics of the Koch brothers and how they manipulate uh, governments, right. literally state governments, through a variety of means. Um, I understand uh, um, um, just just one little uh, point. Um, one of their organizations, the American Legislative Exchange Council, ALEC, um, has something like 38 members in in the um, uh, New Mexico legislature, 
And that's a Koch Brothers operation. Sure, absolutely. So, um, um, Alan Weber uh, has the smarts and he has the means to carry on an effective campaign on the Koch Brothers. So, um, I switched over from uh, Howie Morales, uh, who I think is a great guy and, and, and probably would make a good governor. Um, uh, because I, I, I think that uh, um, um, we've got to mobilize the non-voters and the unlikely voters, the people who stayed home mm -hmm. in 2010. And when people realize uh, how bad this government uh, of Susana Martinez is and what, uh, whom she really represents, uh, they will turn out. So could you describe, in your words anyway, what uh, this ad against Alan was about using you? And how did they... What were the implications? I mean, I think all of us who read it and understood it. Was it was actually an attack more, more than an ad. Well, um, well, attack, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, it was an attack. Uh, there appears to be two parts to it. One is uh, my past. Right. Uh, as a, as a uh, Channel 13 called me a uh, well-known terrorist. <laughs> I don't know when I was convicted, but and, and anyway, I did, uh, I, I do cop to the fact that I started an organization that, that engaged in violence. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll cop to the to the uh, uh, to that aspect of it, but but um, I was never convicted of terrorism, and uh, and a, a, a simple definition I use is uh, attacking um, uh, 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 civilians. However, I've changed my definition of terrorism. I think all war is terrorism, and we could get into that too. Um, but one is the past, and it's the same exact thing as Sarah Palin. Uh, uh, reiterated hundreds and hundreds of times um, about Obama, that Obama knew uh, Bill Ayers, therefore he's palling around with a terrorist. Yeah. So uh, Weber, uh, Alan Weber has a, um, uh, a, a fundraising party and a get-to-no uh, party at my house, which my wife, incidentally, uh, Marla uh, Painter, uh, 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 was the host of the party. I wasn't, because I didn't support him. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and and <laughs> I, I, I supported Howard Morales at the time. Uh, it was only when I heard him talk about the Koch brothers that I decided that, 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 that it would be a smart uh, strategy on That's his great. part, and yeah. a winning strategy. So um, uh, Marla had this, this, this party, but the idea of having a party at the home of a terrorist, that's one thing. But then, actually, the Republicans have developed a second t talking point. Recently, and that has to do with my opposition um, to to militarism. Well, I, I oppose the military. I feel that the military uh, is a terrible waste of, of our resources, and that the function of the military is terrorism. So, for example, I called in some of my writing. I've I've called John McCain a terrorist. Okay. So now they're trying to uh, appeal to the military vote. Uh-huh. Yeah. That'll come out more in the general election if Alan uh, Weber wins the primary. So it's real clear, though, to all of us who know you, that you are a follower of nonviolence and, uh, and that you have a, a very, very solid, deep understanding of what that means, coupled with a passion for, and I'm using this in the best sense, righteous civil disobedience, in causes that are seemingly hopeless for uh, regular redress. My experience in, in um, uh, having advocated violence and having gotten very close to it, I mean, we, the, the truth of the matter is that, that the only people uh, whom the uh, uh, Weather Underground actually hurt were three of our own in an accident, which I described in detail in the, uh, in the book. So... Um, uh, having been that close to violence, and I, I had to rethink it really hard. See, I felt I, I was overcome at the time, back during the war in Vietnam, by the fact that our country, our government, was murdering millions of people. And it's not exactly obvious to know the exact right thing to do when you're overcome with that realization. Sure, so I, 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 I sort of got seduced or su seduced myself down the path of violent revolution, as a, which, which I believe was a fantasy. Um, 
it was very current at the time. I was a follower of Che Guevara. Uh, uh, and, 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 and Che advocated guerrilla warfare. Um, I could talk at length about, about, about the seduction of violence to young people and why I, I went for it. But having gotten that close um, and seeing the results, namely accidents, namely um, splitting the, ma the mass movement around yeah. violence, um, uh, giving ammunition to the government. Yeah. I mean, these are pretty heavy things. And, and so, uh, as a consequence, um, I, I looked, um, it, uh, over the last 45 years, I've looked extremely closely at nonviolence and what it's accomplished in the world. Um, the late 20th century, um, uh, great things were accomplished yeah. with nonviolence. The fall of the Soviet Union, for better or worse, but um, the, the fall of the Shah of Iran, again, for better or worse. Yeah. But, but um, uh, nonviolence is, uh, is, 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 I believe, a much um, uh, a more viable strategy um, uh, from a practical point of view as well as from a moral point of view. If I can say just one more thing. Sure, sure. Um, Back in uh, around 1989, 1990, I heard the Dalai Lama speak at Pope Joy Hall, and uh, someone said to him, um, given what the Chinese are doing to your country, how come you're not angry at them? And how come you don't advocate war for liberation? And he said, well, the Chinese are our neighbors. And when this is over, we'll still have to live with them. So all that being said uh, now, we have a, a, a pretty a sort of almost ho-hum strategy used against Allen's, you know, it's called guilt by association, by a candidate who I believe, or actually a sitting office holder, who I happen to believe is really losing her grip. I think the uh, I think the amassed amount of information about her and about her curious doings and her non doings and her horrible language, etc., and her calling you know an eight year lieutenant government a bitch uh, is you know it's really I think you know slowly beginning to mount up along with all of the other um, not so esoteric or so or so difficult to understand. Uh, political maneuverings and defundings and hurting of people, a great many people all over New Mexico. Uh, so I would love you, if you wouldn't mind, to sort of give me uh, and our audience an analysis of your view of Susana Martinez's administration and why you think Alan Weber, or presumably any other Democrat, I would think, uh, or at least a couple of them, uh, could unseat her. Well, I, actually, I'm struck by one thing you said about losing her grip. I, I don't know. I don't know what her grip was, you know, how, how mentally uh, together she was in, in the past. And um, I understand she was pretty mean as a prosecutor. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, she's been mean as a governor. Uh, the um, um, decimation of the um, mental health uh, system in New Mexico is mean, and 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 it, it, it and it has it reeks of, of of the desire for corporate profit, literally. Um, uh, I've I've talked at length with Jerry Ortiz Pino about it, and he knows it from what's what's happened from the inside, and many many people have suffered because of 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 of, of closing down very effective programs. The um, uh, the deregulation of uh, 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 drilling uh, um, water uh, and and mining uh, again for business interests of business or corporate prof profits has has horribly affected the the environment. Um, she has no conception of of of, of environmental uh, preservation. Um, she has no conception of public land. Um, we have an interesting situation in our neighborhood, uh, the South Valley. Um, the federal government has uh, bought up 
um, with the help of the county and the state legislature, has bought up um, uh, the old Price's Dairy. Right, right. And uh, it's now a federal wildlife refuge. It's being developed. Um, the state um, refuses to help. Absolutely refuses. Yeah. The uh, um, uh, Department of uh, 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 Minerals and Energy uh, has somehow has jurisdiction over land. They don't believe in public land. They do not believe in public land. So the state doesn't help, and the city isn't helping very much because R.J. Barry is uh, um, uh, uh, an ally of, 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 of uh, Susana Martinez. So, um, um, I mean, to me, it's, it's, it's crazy to not believe in public land. But her, her administration is a textbook Tea Party Koch Brothers regime. They're, they're, uh, as a result of being elected by a very small number of, of voters in 2010, they're, they're going for everything, you know? Yeah. And um, I don't know if this is losing the grip or not, but I, I don't think we... Uh, uh, I, I think any, any of the Democrats will do better um, if, if elected. And, and um, I... I'm I'm uh, I'm a loyal card carrying Democrat, so I'm I'm going to uh, pitch in as much as I can. Now, if it hurts my candidate, that's another thing. So, speaking of of the mayor, uh, we know that the mayor and the governor are t tightly connected. We know that uh, the chief Eden is a as a former uh, cabinet secretary of the governor. Uh, we know that um, that our uh, I think probably our our mutual feelings about civil disobedience took embodiment uh, earlier in the week at the city council. Uh, this was a nonviolent protest. This was, uh, this was, as Ray Gardenio said, a redress of grievances in the face of uh, stonewalling, uh, a complete blank wall about all the things that have happened. Not a single mention still almost three weeks out of, of, uh, of the incredible tragedy of the murder of Mary Hawks, what, um, which I still, um, what, um, um, do you think that the strategy at the council that night was effective? You're talking about the citizens' arrest, yes, yeah. or the attempted citizens' yeah. arrest. And I mean. all the rest of it. Well, well the, essentially disrupting the meeting. Um, I don't know. I, I think possibly yes, um, as a one-shot deal. <laughs> I don't advocate doing it tonight, right, right, for example. Yeah, right, right, right. You know, um, when the, when the council is meeting again. Um, first of all, um, are, are you aware that the center of 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 of, of the anti-police violence um, uh, organizing is the families? And oh, the yeah. parents, yes. Yes. they've been at it for years. For years. For years. Yeah. I remember a couple of years ago attending a meeting that they, it was a Progressive Voter Alliance. They, were, they literally had to take over our meeting because they had so much to say. Yeah. And we, 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 we said, yes, this is right. You know, yeah, right. Uh, they do it. They did have, nobody was listening. I mean, it's not like... Uh, this is a new issue. It's been of uh, many years developing. Uh, it's been the entire f uh, four and a half years of of uh, Mayor Barry's um, uh, administration. It's gotten much worse. There's been no response. Uh, the DOJ, the Department of Justice um, uh, report, is crystal clear. There's no ambiguity. The um, political leadership and the uh, uh, um, direct leadership of the uh, police department have have no interest in stopping the violence, and 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 in, in demilitarizing the mindset, as well as all the toys, etc., of the mil of of the police. So, um, I think it's an expression of 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 the frustration and outrage that the the families and a lot of other people uh, uh, share. Or, or, or um, it, the disruption was probably okay. It's you know, it's not necessary. Let me put it this way: self-expression, expressing your feelings, can have a, a, a useful uh, strategic role. Uh, but you, but we have to think uh, in bigger terms: uh, how is this going to change? 
And it seems to me that ultimately it's going to change when the people of Albuquerque demand that it changes. So now uh, we have to figure out ways to um, um, appeal to the people of Albuquerque um, to put pressure on the uh, uh, administration or to change it. I'm thinking a little bit more about um, Alan Weber and his his uh, his expertise in business. I've always been surprised that this um, that this growing image now of Albuquerque as a violent place, as a place that's not only uh, crime ridden, but uh, but now you know is kind of crazed with uh, policemen who are shooting people at the drop of a hat. It's just just plain bad for business. I mean, this is, this is a, you know a crass way of saying it, but but you would think that all of the leadership of a town like ours, which is in the doldrums economically, and uh, would be rising up against this and saying, you know, this is a terrible thing. We can't make a living in this environment. Uh, but uh, but one one doesn't seem to hear that. What do you think a progressive businessman will do for the New Mexico economy should he be elected? Well, I'm hoping that, first of all, uh, um, Mr. Weber will bring new ideas, you know? I mean, uh, here's a fundamental idea that he's been pushing, uh, renewable energy. Right. I mean, it's not, you don't have to be a genius, but yeah. you have to realize that fossil fuel is on the way out. Yeah. Did you see the front page of the New York Times yesterday yeah. with that map? Yeah. That map was the scariest thing of, of all the 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 the, cli- the, the, the temperature changes uh, in the, in the country in the last twenty years. It's insane it that the Republican Party denies the existence of climate change. So, so just that alone is a big change. Um, but I think Mr. Weber uh, uh, appears to be tuned in to. Um, a kind of a, 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 a innovative thinking, like, uh, uh, for example, using uh, social media around tourism, you know, rather than putting up uh, billboards that say New Mexico true, you know, have an app that does X, Y, or Z. I don't know. But but um, I'm, 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 I'm hoping that, that he brings an intelligence to this situation, uh, uh, which, which we don't currently have. Now, as for why the business leaders, the business community of Albuquerque doesn't force the mayor to clean up the situation, that makes no sense whatsoever. You know, I, I, I can't I can't believe that Tesla will actually build a factory here in this environment when we're in national embarrassment. So, you know, I've been I've been on online a lot uh, uh, researching crime in other places and police killings in other places and I keep on running into these really these awful things that people are saying about us you know that we're a, you know a scum city that we're you know a place that should be left at the you know at the earliest possible moment and you know these don't sound like you know sort of crazy people either they sound like people are really genuinely worried and yet as you as you know and I know you feel this way too and I certainly do, and I know Benito does as well, that this is this is our home. This is the best place in America. This is the most wonderful place I've ever been in my life, and I never, ever planned to leave. Uh, so while these problems are terrible, uh, what, they're, what they're really hurting is not a bad place, but a magnificent place, a kind of a, you know, a paradise in its own way. And, it, and it's beginning to drive me nuts. <laughs> I'm wondering if you feel the same way. Well, I'm 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 struck by by uh, uh, your role as a booster. Uh, um, but the truth is, when I read your book, the first uh, issue, um, first edition of uh, "City at the Edge of of the World," uh, um, "City at the Edge," that's the title, right? Uh, uh, I was struck by how much you love. Albuquerque, and I love Albuquerque, too. I, I mean, in a way, Albuquerque saved my life. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. And so we're, we're tr- you and I are transplants who fell in love early in our lives, and, and we've had a love affair with the place for a long time. Um, there are lots of people who, uh, uh, who are like us. There are also lots of people who um, have uh, uh, um, come and gone. Yes. You know? <laughs> and there's a lot of people wound up pretty tight in Albuquerque. You know, there's there there's a um, 
the, um, racism is still a big deal, and 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 poverty, and and uh, uh, you know, uh, Breaking Bad was was not one hundred percent fiction. You know, it 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 it, it captured um, the um, uh, uh, a lot of truth as a, uh, Albuquerque as a character. Yeah. You know, um, the New York Times referred to Albuquerque as uh, cheerfully tattered, cheerfully tatty. Jeez. Cheerful. I had to look up tatty. It it means so uh, threadbare, worn. Uh, and so now whenever I see one of these strip shopping centers that's half empty, you know, I think, oh, yeah, cheerfully tatty, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, I, you know I, it, this conversation, um, and especially uh, uh, having this conversation uh, about Albuquerque between you and me strikes me as extremely subjective. I think yeah. so, too. <laughs> you know, um, we're, you and I are, 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 uh, come from specific backgrounds that that personal and cultural and class and uh, uh, family that 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 that, that uh, uh, forced us into the bosom of Albuquerque you know actually uh, just uh, one more thing uh, I had a, a great job for for almost 30 years uh, working at the um, uh, uh, community college uh, which uh, uh, was called the Albuquerque Technical Vocational Institute and is now the Central New Mexico Community College. I loved the job because it kept it, it, it kept me in, in contact with incredibly broad range of people and I fell in love with my students, thousands of them. So um, um, being a teacher at a community college is a particularly a wonderful vantage point. You've been a teacher yeah. uh, your whole life, and, and 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 you've had the same experience. But I think you and I, you and I are, are, are pretty. Uh, I wouldn't say unique, but but it, our this particular conversation, and I'll repeat myself, is kind of subjective. So I guess the uh, uh, subjective or not, uh, I think um, I know this um, that if you don't believe that government has a role in people's lives. Um, you strip an economy of about half of its power. Um, now, I, I, and if you believe that you should remove the role of government from an economy, you practically leave it in tatters uh, or... Um, uh, uncheerfully tatty. So, uh, and I'm beginning to think, and why I, I said the uh, the governor was losing her grip, I didn't mean mentally, I meant politically. Uh. Um, was that uh, suddenly it has to become, and I think it is becoming clear, that we are not doing well under her leadership, that nobody is doing well under her, under her leadership, the children are starving under her leadership because she does not believe the government has a role in an economy. So I'm, I guess why I asked about what an, a progressive businessman would do, uh, is it your understanding that, that Alan Weber um, would put government more powerfully into, into aiding the economy? The far right doesn't believe there's any such thing as a common good. It's just individual good. But it's obviously untrue. I mean, and, and, and the, the, the condition of the economy, for example, is exactly, that you've described, is exactly because they don't believe in the common good. Right. And I've talked to Alan Weber a little. I've actually met him only a couple times. And, oh. but I, and one of the things we talked about is the idea that there is a common good. It still exists, um, and I, I suspect that um, uh, his progressive um, uh, economic agenda will involve uh, uh, the government um, uh, taking care of social needs, or the and the government um, 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 uh, restricting the depredations of 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 of, uh, of 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 capital. For example, one of the things he's pushing really hard is raising the minimum wage to a, a living level, 
which is well over. It's got to be over ten bucks. Well, it has to be. Well you know, uh, Seattle just voted for fifteen dollars an hour, and 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 I think that's much more realistic. Um, so um, the government uh, uh, has, has is 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 can be the embodiment of the whole, you know, and and represent. The com and 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 there and and the belief that we are all in this together. I just want to point out one thing that I think um, um, uh, we've lost, and I think Alan Weber and and probably the other Democrats right. will bring back. Um, back in um, when we were kids, the idea of common good was so strong that the wealthiest people say the local banker or uh, company uh, owner, a corporate owner, pay, they paid 90% of their income. 90% of their income. And it was the most prosperous time. It was a time when, when, when more people were, were gaining in prosperity than ever before and ever after. And because of an equalization right. that is necessary. When people make lots of money, it's not because of their own effort. You know, I, I know Obama got in a lot of trouble by saying that. We're involved in social activities. A company is a social activity. A market is a social activity. You know, everything is social. So I'm, I'm, I, I think Alan Weber uh, uh, is, is a smart guy. I think he recognizes this. And I think he will um, uh, uh, be able to try to turn the economy around. So, you know, when I was a kid, uh, I used to believe that police officers were the representatives of the law. And I was taught that the law was a sacred thing because it arose out of the Constitution of the United States in which all human beings uh, are, are uh, have equal justice under law. Um, I think, too, um, I was taught that there is a common good, that you can't do business without roads, that you can't do business without water lines, that you can't do business without sewer lines, you can't do business without fire engines and police departments and all those other kinds of things. Uh, so I completely agree with you about the common good, and I think, and I think it's the bonding thing between all of those five candidates uh, that that are uh, that are now challenging the governor, um, because indeed um, I do believe there is a a, a fundamental deep seated uh, split in the American character, and it always has been. You know, it's almost almost polarized. It's not quite. It sort of shifts every now and again, but it is. Uh, um, that strange tension between uh, all of us being human beings and all of us needing the same things and all of us being individuals and all of us wanting our freedom. It's, you know, freedom and equality, the great struggle in our country. But uh, when, you, um, when you think about what is possible now in New Mexico, let's say that one of these five candidates should, uh, should happen to win. What, um, what do you think should be and I'm asking this of you because I have you here, and it's, and it's a joy to be able to do this. What do you think should be the immediate agenda, uh, say, in the first 100 days, of a Democratic governor in New Mexico? The election, first of all, the election of a, of a Democratic government, governor will mean the mobilization of a lot of new voters. That's true. That's an important fact, which is the people have stayed away from the polls from the from the uh, voting booths in, in droves, especially 2010, um, new voters, unlikely voters, um, uh, disaffected Democrats. Um, there's going to have to be a lot of new people voting, and that's going to represent. Um, it it'll be almost like a a, a a power shift, where where people will will mm. say we want the government to help. Young people need help with the cost of higher education. It's completely out of control. It it's crazy. It is. is public is higher education a private good or a public good? I think that's 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 an example. How about mental health? You know, uh, mental health services, behavioral health. Is that a public good or a private good? What about um, uh, uh, protection, uh, police protection of of mentally. Uh, unstable people, rather than shooting them. Right. Is that a public good or a private good? We're going to have to figure all these things out. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know about 100 days. I think it's going to take uh, uh, 
a, a number of years to 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 undo the damage and and a lot of thought. So I don't I don't know about a hundred days. Um, I haven't talked to any of the candidates or, or certainly not Alan Weber about his first hundred days, and I haven't really thought of it until right now. Mm -hmm. But um, I think in terms more of of a shift in public um, uh, uh, mobilization. Already, already, public opinion tends toward progressive ideas. Most people believe, 60%, 70%, that health care is a human right. But that, that belief doesn't necessarily get translated into votes during an election. So the next step is this election in November. Can we get the votes, get people to go and make a choice that will eventually result in something new. I don't have a plan, but I, I, I just think a lot about the mobilization. This has been a wonderful conversation. I truly have enjoyed it. And I hope, I hope as uh, possibly as the election season runs on, we might do another one a little bit closer to the real election. Ah, that would be great. After June. Well, thank you. Barrett, I'm I, I'm a big fan of yours well, too. Um, 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 we uh, the New Mexico Mercury is doing a, a great service. You know, I think of of, of you guys as the, the New Yorker oh, of, of of Central New Mexico. Thank you so much. And I'd love to come back. I really would.